Okay, I'm gonna back. I'm back on. Back on again. So I'm gonna stay for another 20 minutes uh, to answer any questions you guys have. Uh, so a lot of people, you know, they, if they're not used to investing, um, they they're very scared. You know, they have all this uh, unknown that they are worried about. Uh, but if you just take that first step, um, so the most important thing is you need to get over that that fear, uh, you know, of unknown. So if you have never done investing, you're gonna have a lot of fear. So my recommendation, my recommendation is, uh, just try to buy something as soon as possible. Don't try to be perfect. You know, the, the problem with a lot of people is that, thank you for the likes. They try to make it perfect. They're always waiting for you know the best deal. They're waiting for the cheapest interest. They're waiting for the perfect home. They're waiting for a new property. Don't don't try to be perfect. Just just buy something as quickly as possible to. To make sure that you are used to, you know, you you are used to uh, to investing. Nearby Houston, and uh, um, the seller actually agreed to sell the finance me. So in that situation, so he was trying to sell me the mobile home park for seven hundred k, and uh, he wanted three hundred k down payment, and he's gonna finance me four hundred k. So I mean, in that case, you know, theoretically, I could find a partner to come come up with the three hundred k. Uh, so you know, and uh, because I already took care of the problem, I found a deal, and I found the seller that's willing to finance me, because you know I found a deal, so I can bring the partner with the down payment, so we can buy it. In that case, you know I could buy it without the money down. Or if in some situation, let's say if you buy a property, if uh, hey, thank you for the for the gift, uh, Dennis. Uh, uh, let's say in another situation, let's say if you buy a property for a hundred k, let's say if you don't have the down payment, maybe the 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 uh, agent can borrow you the commission, so that's another way you can finance for the down payment. So there there are many options. I mean, it, it's just a little bit harder to do, but it's uh, it's doable. Can we join you? Or we buy our, our? I mean, you can join me too. So right now I'm working on a couple of deals, uh, mobile home parks in uh, Florida and Georgia. Uh, so my minimum requirement is has to it has to have le at least ten percent cap. Actually, ten percent cap is okay. It's, it's not particularly exciting to me. Usually, I prefer maybe at, at, at least close to fifteen percent cap. Uh, for the mobile home park, I prefer to be you know no more than twenty twenty thousand per space. Uh, and also, my criteria for the for the area is uh, I prefer the area to have at least a hundred a hundred k population, uh, and the home price has got to be at least a hundred k, and uh, the area rental rate is at least a thousand. And also the the crime rate is no more than four hundred, and I prefer the area to be at least within you know no more than one hour drive of major airport, and also I prefer the area with uh, um, major uh, employers, economic economic engine, for example, uh, military facilities, um, installations, uh, universities, hospitals. So that's because that's uh, those big uh, facility they're gonna provide a job, right? That's so the people the employees they're gonna have a demand, they're gonna have the money. And they're gonna have the demand for housing, right? And also, I prefer a property that's nearby some type of shopping, right? You know, Walmart. Depending on what level of uh, what class of uh, property you gonna you buying, uh, you know, probably Walmart, Costco, Whole Food. So if you buy some property that's within one or two miles uh, drive of those uh, shopping uh, locations, then that's a really good deal. So when we buy, we just uh, mostly we. We, we we call the owners directly. We ask them if they want to sell. That's how you get. That's how you can get a good deal because a lot of deals on the you, you find on the internet is pretty. It's not a, as a good deal. The the cap rate is not that high and it's pretty. Sometimes it's overpriced. Okay, skin daddy. Yeah, you can follow me. Okay, you can follow my TikTok. I'm gonna follow you too. That'd be 10 mental. What is that? So follow my TikTok, give me some likes, whatever question you have, we can talk about it. So financial independence is not easy, but uh, it's, do it's definitely doable. Uh, you just need to uh, get out of that race, the rat race. So, but most people, they, most people are stuck in the rat race because, uh, you know, um, Especially sometimes you get married, you, you have kids, then you don't have the extra money to make investment. So when you're in that kind of situation, it's a little bit harder to get out of the rat race. 
uh, in that situation, you just you just need to figure out a way to increase your income. That way, you can have set up set aside some extra income to purchase and to invest in real estate. Um, it's probably easier to to become financially independent before you get married. Uh, it's actually the earlier you start, the better. You know, pretty much you just need to save enough money to purchase the property, and uh, once you purchase your first property, then you're gonna be able to start to ac accumulate equity. Once you start accumulating equity, then you're gonna have extra money to buy more and more properties. Uh, if you just plan to buy one property a year, then you know, you know, it doesn't take that long. Maybe it's just three to five years before you become financially independent, right? Let's say if your monthly expense is ten thousand, and right now your monthly income is ten thousand, uh, you know, you just buy a property every year until your passive income, the rental income, replaces your active income. Then you are essentially financially free. Uh, when you can replace the active income with passive income. How do you find homes that are selling by cold call? Yeah, cold call. Correct. Cold call. I've done it and I'm so Southern California. I'm in Southern California. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, yeah. So, I mean, I'm not saying in California it's not possible. It just uh, takes more work. You just need to be able to find that good deal. Uh, there's still a lot of people that are buying in Southern California. Uh, maybe you can still do it um, to uh, for flipping. It still makes sense. But uh, as far as uh, uh, buy and hold, uh, it's probably a little bit harder. This man speaking the truth. Thank you. Is it too late now in Southern California? Uh, in Southern California, it's hard to find a good deal. Let's put it that way. But you can still make money if you want to flip because the price is high enough. So I just took a listing. Uh, it's in Santa Ana. Uh, the guy he bought it for four hundred eighty thousand, and he put in a uh, hundred thousand to remodel. So basically, his cost is about uh, six hundred thousand. So now we're gonna sell. We're gonna put on the market for sale for seven ninety nine. So basically, if you sell it, he's gonna make at least I think probably a hundred fifty k. It's still doable. You just need to be able to find a, a deal that's a, a property that's a significantly below market price. Yeah, it's much harder in California. It's much harder. Uh, so if you want it, that's why you know I'm, I'm, I was saying that I, I do not invest in California. I just I just go out of state. Uh, in out of state, out of state, there's still uh, many more prop, many more opportunities. Well, how many lender do you like? Uh, I recently the one I use is uh, called a rehab wallet rehab wallet that one is pretty decent um, there's there's a whole bunch yeah so last year how the, the way I found the rehab wallet is uh, last year I went to the bigger bigger pocket convention in uh, Louisiana so they have a whole bunch of vendors there so rehab wallet is one of the vendors at uh, bigger pocket convention if you guys get a chance you should go to the bigger pocket convention every year it's a pretty good event. They have uh, a lot of vendors. They have a lot of people attending, so you can you know network with other people. That's a good place to you know to learn how to invest in real estate, and also maybe you know to partnership with some investors. Uh, so yeah. What's the minimum equity appreciation the bank will let you pull out of the home? Um, I think uh, depending on what bank. Uh, usually you can pull out as much as uh, you know seventy five percent. Sometimes maybe even eighty percent. What city you live in? I live in a uh, nearby Pasadena. Thank you. I check out Rehab Wallet. Yeah, Rehab Wallet. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Hello. Welcome. Follow my TikTok. Give me some likes. Whatever question you have, we can talk about it. So, greetings from East Los Angeles. Welcome, Gambino. Hey, what's up, brother? So, financial independence is possible. It's doable. You just you just need to plan for it. You just need to be disciplined about it. You just need to you know um, take out the time to to follow through. So, what happens? Uh, I made this same mistake in early in my life. Uh, I was, you know, always busy, you know, always try to make a ends meet. I was always always trying to make a buck. And every time after work, I get tired. So I, 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 I always never get it wrong to do the investment. That's a shame. So that's, 
Hello, uh, Uncle Paco. Hello from Sacramento. So that's the that's the story with a lot of people. A lot of people they just like so tired. They don't have time to invest. They don't have the money to invest. But you must set out time and you must set set aside money to invest. Because the earlier you do that, the earlier you can become financially independent. Let's say like most people, they don't set out set aside the time to invest. They don't set aside the money to invest. If you don't do that, you're just gonna be in the rat race your whole life. There's no way to get out of it. If you do not, you know, start investing. Um, the the earlier you start to invest, the earlier you can become financially independent. How do you know if you have enough to retire? That's depending on you. Like I said earlier, right? If you, you just ask yourself, how much do I need a month, right? If you say I need a so for example, I'll give you an example for me. Okay, so so for me to retire, I think if I have thirty k a month, then I, I think I'm okay. So you know, it's easy, right? For me, I just calculate. Okay, so I'm gonna have uh, let's say if I'm gonna have four cars, each car is gonna be cost me two thousand dollars. You know, probably the higher brand and the high, you know, the more 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 like a uh, expensive cars. So I'm talking about you know, gasoline, insurance, and everything. Uh, probably you know, because I mean, right now I drive a Mercedes Benz, but uh, I would I would like to buy maybe a Rolls Royce or Bentley, and a Lamborghini. Lamborghini. So I'm thinking maybe every month I need to budget maybe at least ten thousand dollars for my cars expense, and uh, then for traveling expense uh, maybe every month I'm gonna budget five thousand, and for uh, my household expenses I'm gonna budget maybe uh, approximately ten thousand, and for other related issue medical food whatever maybe total so I'm, for me total uh, if I can have thirty thousand dollars thirty grand a, a month every month, so that would be. I would I would be you know I think I would be okay with it. So right now I have about ten grand passive income, so I just need to have twenty more grand passive income before I can completely retire. I mean retire doesn't mean I don't do anything. It's just that I have more you know uh, freedom to do whatever I want. So basically from there on anything I do is not because for money. It's just because you know I'm just doing it because I like it. Uh, so, whether how soon, how how what's how much is enough for you to retire is depending on you, your quality of standard, your standard of life. You know, depending on you. I mean, if I lower my standard, my life, my standard right now, I could retire now. You know, I mean, if I lower my standard, I could live on ten ten grand a month. But it's just that you know, I I would rather to have a higher standard of life. So you know, then I just need to work a little bit more before I you know decide to retire. If you buy a home today, when do you think there will be enough equity to invest in a new property? Well, that's depending on how much you buy, right? So that's why that's what I always say, right? You make money when you buy, not when you sell, right? So I'll give you the example for the mobile home park. Let's say the reason I say I'm not gonna pay more than twenty k per space is because if I pay more than twenty k per space, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to make money. If I, that's because I was I went to Las Vegas. I I talked to an owner that with a mobile home park. It's a I think around one hundred twenty units. He wants to sell six point five million dollars. Even if he sell us at six million dollars, that's still expensive. That's about fifty k per space. So I'm not even sure I'm gonna be able to make money, because let's say if he's willing to sell for me for three point six million dollars. Then I might buy it because I'm I'm so if it's three point six million, that means I'm gonna buy it for maybe around thirty k per spot per space. Uh, the worst case scenario, I might sell it for thirty five thousand thirty five thousand per space, or if I get lucky, I can sell forty thousand per space. So that's why I say you make money when you buy, not when you sell. Let's say if I bought it, the mobile home park for six million dollars, then that's just pure speculation because I don't know if I can you know sell for more than fifty thousand per space. But if I'm able to buy it for twenty thousand or thirty thousand per space, I know there's a very high chance you know I can sell it for thirty thousand or forty thousand per space. Sounds like you're not going to retire, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Hello, hello, welcome. What do you do for work if you don't mind? So I'm most of my work is real estate related. So it's basically real estate sales and uh, investment, real estate investment. All depending on the all depending on the rents in the in increase in rent. Well, yeah. So the rent, uh, you gotta you gotta, like I said earlier, right? You make money when you buy, not when you sell. Let's say if you're buying a property at million dollars, 
and let's say if your current rent is two thousand, then that's a shitty return, right? But you don't you don't know if you can. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll share you this story. I was trying to buy a five unit in Los Angeles before. That was the last year, I think. It was pretty cheap. It's a uh, ninety thousand. I was I was supposed to buy it for nine hundred thousand, like close to a million dollars. Uh, but the t the owner uh, owned the property since like fifty years ago. So she bought it for like twenty thousand dollars, twenty or fifty thousand dollars. But she hasn't raised. She has ra She hasn't raised the rent in like uh, thirty years. So the rent was like uh, only in, for four units was like only uh, four thousand uh, dollars. But uh, I cannot raise the rent because there's rent control. So um, so in that case, you know, uh, the the income is too low. So I'm not. I, I didn't buy it because you know I, I don't know. I don't know when because there's no way for me to raise the rent because there's rent control. So that's why I didn't buy the property. And also, for example, the mobile home park I bought, um, the rent, the tent, the, the owner also didn't raise rent in a long time. So, uh, but uh, so after I bought it, I'm raising rent twenty dollars a year. So I know twenty dollars a year is still okay. It's not a whole lot. So I know after five years, I can raise, increase my rent by a hundred. So you gotta be reasonable, right? You cannot. You, uh, you know, let's say if you, 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 your current tenant pay you a thousand dollar in rent, you're not gonna raise them raise rent five hundred dollars a year. That's just not possible. But you, maybe you can raise rent a hundred dollars per year. Rent control areas. Yeah, uh, I would not buy. So that's why I'm not buying anything in Los Angeles. So most areas in Los Angeles city are rent control areas. In Los Angeles, can you raise rent after some somebody move move out? Uh, I think after they move out, they can. You can. But the problem is they're never gonna move out because let's say if the area rent is three thousand and they're only paying a thousand, do you think they're gonna move out? No, <laughs> because if they move out, they're gonna have to, you know, find a place where they have to pay two thousand dollars more in rent. The only way they're gonna move out if you if you if you give them money, it's called a uh, cash for keys. You tell them you negotiate. You say I'm gonna give you thirty thousand. Can you move out? That's the only way. But most people would not move out because if they move out, they gotta pay so much more in rent. People are not stupid, right? Can I rent the Lamborghini when you get it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Leverage buying options, seller carry. Yeah. So, actually, you know, believe it or not, there's still a lot of sellers that's willing to carry because uh, to them is a is a big uh, tax incentive. Especially a lot of people that doesn't want to uh, do 1031 exchange. Especially a lot of people that the older folks, they just want to retire. If they want to retire, they would rather you know sell a finance for you, because they don't have to pay all the taxes. Can I rent the Lamborghini when you get it? Okay, leverage by seller options. So then it's not even worth rehabbing the rent rental. Just wait until they move out and raise it. Correct. Correct. Yeah, of course. They're, if they're in there, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot rehab. They're, they're living in there. How are you gonna rehab? Rehab. Is it a good time? Good time for what? To buy a house now? Uh, where are you located? I mean, if you don't have a house, it's always a good time. Okay. Because uh, maybe you're gonna overpay, but uh, you're gonna start to build equity, you know. So if you don't have a house, I always recommend you to buy buy a house. Maybe you can buy a single family, or you can buy a two, duplex, or triplex, or fourplex. New York, yeah. So that's the that's the challenge, because uh, you know many cities nowadays the property are so expensive. I have a condo, okay, and add ten percent profit to for to seller for twelve months to carry. Yeah, I mean. You, even if you have paid ten percent to carry for sellers to carry, that's okay, because at least you get to control the property. But obviously, you know, you want to try to negotiate a lower interest rate you can, if you can. Okay, follow my TikTok. Give me some likes. Whatever question you have, we can talk about it. Uh, thank you guys for all the questions. Uh, now it's four o'clock. If no more question, I'm gonna. Uh, in the session, I'm saying, how can you build equity at the top of the market? Uh, 
you can. I mean, it's still possible. You can, uh, like I said earlier, right? You can buy out of state. You can buy in uh, some second tier, second tier, third tier cities. You can buy different property type. Uh, you can buy property from uh, sellers that's uh, in a hurry to sell. Uh, you can buy ugly properties. Uh, it's basically contrary and sinking, right? Contrary and sinking. Don't think the same way as, as everybody else. If you're just gonna buy a single family home on the market, you're not gonna get a good deal. So you gotta look for different type of property types. You gotta buy property in other areas, in you know different, more remote areas, not in downtown metro. Uh, so there's there's always good deal to be found. You just need to be more creative about it. Appreciate the knowledge. Thank you, Colts.